My name is David Harris. I'm on the faculty at Harvey Mudd College. And uh, Danny is a Harvey Mudd student who's been focused on the benchmarking work this summer. Um, so I'll start out with the first portion with an overview of this project, and then Daniel will give us more info on the benchmarking. Um, Jeremy, can you advance the slide for us? Or, uh, oh, I see, we, okay, got it. So today we'll talk a bit about the uh, goals of this uh, Wally open source processor and uh, capabilities of the processor. Uh, we'll talk about the verification efforts, including booting Linux, some uh, initial synthesis results, and uh, the benchmarking that um, Daniel's been doing with relation to EMBench. And then we would love to uh, consider further collaboration. So this uh, project has been driven by a textbook that I'm working on with my colleagues, uh, Professor James Stein from Oklahoma State University and Professor Sarah Harris from uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, we expect it will be coming out with Elsevier uh, end of next year. And it's a follow on to the intro textbook that we have, uh, Digital Design and Computer Architecture RISC-V edition that came out last year. Um, so this is aiming to be an upper undergraduate or intro graduate level textbook, focusing on the real design issues uh, involved in producing a complete processor. So all the books that we're familiar with, including our own, uh, take a simplified processor and focus on the main, main paths through the integer execution unit, for instance, and basic memory accesses. Uh, while this book is going to get into all of the issues involved in designing a real memory system, in designing the real privileged unit, um, in building the branch predictor, in attaching a bus and peripherals, and so on. So we're pretty excited about this. Here's an overview of uh, the um, processor. Uh, it's a single issue, five stage pipeline, uh, same as Hennessy and Patterson and uh, many others. Um, and it's configurable in that it can support either RV32 or RV64 and any uh, set or subset of the uh, standard extensions. Uh, we have simulation running in model sim and logic synthesis with design compiler as well as the Altera FPGA tools. So um, see it's the usual five stage pipeline. The instruction fetch unit um, has an instruction cache accessed concurrently with the instruction TLB, um, giving us the instruction and also uh, physical memory protection um, checking. Meanwhile, the branch predictor is uh, uh, forecasting the next program counter. Uh, there's a optional decompression unit to support the compressed instruction set. Then we go into the functional units. So there's an integer execution unit with the integer register file and the decode stage, and then a single cycle bypass for integer instructions. Uh, the multiply divide unit and the floating point unit have uh, two cycle latency. Um, the load store unit has similar data cache, uh, TLB, and memory protection. The page walker is also in the load store unit. And um, there's a two cycle latency from load to use. And finally, the privileged unit operates in the memory stage. So um, again, uh, Wally supports RV32 and RV64. It has optional extensions of all of the standardized ones, atomic, compressed, multiply, divide, embedded, single, double, and quad floating point. Uh, that's been a lot of work. Um, and the privileged has been our biggest source of bugs. So having supervisor and user mode, the control status registers, and traps. Um, and then uh, virtual memory and physical memory protection. In terms of microarchitectural features, the major ones are optional caches, optional branch predictor, and optional vectored interrupts. And then a set of optional peripherals, the uh, standard uh, Clint and PLIC, a UART, general purpose I.O., and a tightly integrated memory. Um, the chart on the right here gives examples of some of the default configurations that we have. RV32E is the simplest embedded processor with a 32-bit RV32, only the 
uh, e instruction set, so that's 16 registers, and a bus to external memory. Um, RV32IC uh, adds the regular integer and compressed instructions and has an onboard tightly integrated memory uh, holding the instructions and data. While well, RV32GC is the fully featured version of the processor uh, with floating point, multiply, etc., uh, and it has cache and a branch predictor. Uh, for RV64, there's also an IC and a GC flavor. So um, we uh, chose to build uh, Wally and System Verilog. Uh, we think pedagogically that is a good language to be training uh, future microarchitects using. And um, this is probably the first time students will encounter a system of this complexity in HDL. Um, so we try to illustrate the uh, design practices that I would expect our graduates would be using when they go to build complex digital systems in industry. Um, we found um, works surprisingly well to provide configuration options. So we have macros in a config file, such as xlin. And then Verilog provides if statements. Um, these are also known as generate blocks, but it, we learned the generate keyword is optional, and we, we chose to leave that out. So if this uh, xlink configuration is 32 bits, then we build a 32-bit shifter. Otherwise, we build a 64-bit shifter. And with modest amounts of configuration like this through the processor, and lots of buses defined to be, say, X length and size, we're able to support um, all these different configurations. Um, we also felt that sticking with an industry standard design language and design tool uh, causes uh, there to be no abstraction gap between coding and debugging and leads to very efficient logic synthesis. This is the basic pipeline. It looks quite similar to the one in our other textbook and the one in Hennessy and Patterson. Um, here's the load store unit operating in the fetch stage, then the decode and integer register file, the integer execution unit with the uh, bypass muxes, uh, branch comparison, the ALU, and result selection. And then in the memory stage, the load store unit, and finally, the right back stage. Uh, the floating point unit is configurable uh, for half, single, double, or quad precision floating point and multiple precisions. So uh, we can support more than one precision by uh, expanding um, operations into the um, largest format and then operating on them and then packing them back down to the target format. Uh, the biggest item in the FPU is the floating point multiply accumulate unit. Um, and then the one that's been most labor intensive to design is the divide square unit root unit. It uses a recurrence division and square root algorithm. Uh, we have division working uh, in radix two and radix four at this point. Um, and um, in the pipeline that we have, can pack up to four Radix 4 stages into a cycle, so we can get out 8 bits per cycle. We also support early termination uh, to speed up these operations. Uh, there are a variety of other units. Uh, floating point compare, uh, sorry, a floating point convert is the uh, next uh, largest block. And all of these units share a post-processing block that does the normalization shift, round, and flag generation. Privileged unit uh, supports the CSRs, the privilege modes and traps, as well as privileged instructions. Um, the memory management unit uh, handles the PMA and PMP checking uh, for address decoding and also the TLB to support virtual memory. And um, within um, the uh, load store unit, is the hardware page table walker uh, to support the instruction and data TLPs. Uh, we have the pretty standard RISC-V peripherals. The core local interrupter uh, provides the timing and software interrupts. The platform level interrupt controller provides the routing of external interrupts from various peripherals. 
we have a GPIO module that's uh, compatible with the Sci-5 unit, and a UART that's compatible with the standard PC16550D that has Linux drivers. Uh, getting that UART up and debugged uh, was another one of the uh, more interesting components of all of this. For verification, um, we actually, um, I should have put up on here, uh, we started our verification with the Empiris suite, and we're still running that. Um, we've moved most of our effort to the RISC-V ARC test, architecture test suite, because RISC-V Foundation's been uh, pushing that. And we um, run the uh, test float suite from Berkeley to get some additional confidence in the floating point specific tests. Uh, we've found um, tests and test float that failed uh, in some versions of our development that uh, RISC-V ARC test had not caught. Finally, we have our own flavor of uh, Wally RISC-V ARC test to add some custom privileged and peripheral tests that are not yet in the RISC-V ARC test suite. At this point, um, the team got Linux booting, so um, it runs about 575 million instructions to get to the login prompt. This takes about 30 hours of simulation of the Vera login model sim. And we're still debugging the boot on FPGA. We do get to the login prompt, but shortly before we get there, the UART starts printing out uh, scrambled text that has um, a very subtle resemblance to the intended text, but uh, something's gone garbled. Uh, we've synthesized in the TSMC 28 nanometer process and also in the Skywater 90 nanometer uh, open source process. Um, in TSMC 28, and for RV32E, we're seeing um, about 3 gigahertz operation, which corresponds to 28 gate delays per cycle. So that's uh, quite nice. Um, when we go to RDV64GC, uh, presently the uh, privileged uh, unit uh, exceptions uh, are on the critical path. So this generally involves a um, TLB access uh, like giving us an address, giving us some address fault, uh, like PMP checker fault, uh, and then into triggering a trap. Um, and that's presently at 78 fan out of four delays, which is um, a bit more than the 50-ish the that we were hoping to achieve. Uh, we see um, the size of various designs. So on the horizontal axis, we have cycle time uh, normalized to fan out of four inverter delays with the F04 delay being um, about 14 picoseconds in this process. And on the vertical axis, we have area. In this case, we've normalized to the size of a 32-bit adder. So the um, uh, RV32E actually is uh, just, uh, it's very small. Um, the register file, 16 entry register file is about a third of the area. And it's um, uh, oh, tens of uh, adders in size, while the larger versions that include um, caches, uh, even with a much scaled down cache, are into the thousands of adder units of size. So this has been a wonderful collaboration so far. Uh, we've had uh, engagement from three different universities. Um, numerous research students have made major contributions. Uh, the Memory system uh, largely came from uh, Oklahoma team. Uh, the floating point unit um, actually was started by a high school student who's now at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, she's done magnificent work there. And um, uh, Harvey Mudd team has done uh, Linux boot and uh, now synthesis and benchmarking. And Daniel will tell you more about that shortly. Um, we've been uh, working with the RISC-V architecture test interest group and um, they've given us a lot of help uh, getting that flow up and running. And then uh, we went, met Jeremy through the Ambench working group, and that's been very interesting to learn about benchmarking the system. Now we would love more collaborators. Um, those of you um, on the academic side would be interested in reviewing or using the textbook. Um, we would be getting close to the stage for reviews. Um, We'd love to work with research groups who might be interested in extending Wally or applying it uh, in uh, commercial designs. 
Uh, the Git repo um, is intended to be open source. It's uh, still private because we're uh, not yet at a completely stable development, but we expect we're um, maybe two months away from that. And in any case, we'd be happy to add any collaborators um, to the repo before it becomes public. So, Daniel, off to you.